Hi, this is Ms. Clemmy, and welcome to the screencast on the lymphatic system. Now, what you're looking at here is not the lymphatic system. In fact, it's an exhibit um, that's been in museums all around the world called Body Worlds. And uh, essentially, it's just cadavers that they've learned to preserve through a series of steps called plastination. And so they can inject this type of plastic and um, dissect to whatever level or degree that they want for that exhibit. And this right here is just a dissection all the way down to the tiny, tiny vessels of our circulatory system. But that's not what we're concerned about. However, we are pretty familiar with the circulatory system. In this same exhibit, another area of the body that we've already studied is the nervous system. So they can dissect all the way down to the nerves. You can see the central nervous system with the brain and spinal cord along with all the, the major peripheral nerves as well. However, once again, we want to go down even deeper. We want to go to the lymphatic system. Now, unfortunately, Body Worlds doesn't actually have a dissection down to the lymphatic system. But as you can see here, it kind of resembles the circulatory system in that it runs throughout our, our entire body. And so we tend to think of the lymphatic system as a parallel circulatory system. Let's look at what that means. So if we look at the bottom here, this is what we're familiar with. We're familiar with blood entering a major artery, then branching into arterioles, eventually going into capillaries where gases are exchanged, and then um, blood makes its way back to the heart through the venous system. Now, here's and, and that normally works. In fact, that works 85% of the time because essentially sometimes when we're exchanging, say, oxygen and CO2, some fluid may just leak out. But 85% of it gets back into the capillaries and into the blood. The remaining 15% doesn't make it back into the veins. And that 15% then gets picked up by the lymphatic system and eventually it'll get back to the heart that way. So if you look at the big picture here, um, we can see uh, we have the arterial flow. So these would be, this would be the aorta, arteries, arterioles, down to the capillaries. And then those capillaries where the exchange is occurring with those body cells, blood makes its way back. Here would be our 15%. The fluid that doesn't make it back into the veins flows through here. These are some lymph nodes that it flows through along the way, but eventually it does make its way back to the heart. So that's the big picture of things. Um, if you want to look back at those capillary beds, you can see how intricately these two systems do work together. So we've been talking about these lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. Well, what exactly is lymph that's being carried through them? And I originally said earlier, it's just fluid that leaks out that doesn't make it back into the, the veins. And that's really all it is. And you know what lymph is, you just haven't called it that yet. So essentially what we've called it is plasma. It's the liquid portion of blood that leaks out into, um, into our interstitial fluid. And so when it's in between, when it's right in here in this area of limbo, we call it interstitial fluid. But eventually that interstitial fluid gets picked up by the lymphatic system and we call it lymph. Now there's a, a few other players that I want to introduce you to within the lymphatic system, not just lymph. And the first are the vessels that lymph is carried in. There are two major collectors of lymph in our body. And the first is the right lymphatic duct, kind of on the right side um, near our, our shoulder and upper arm. And the thoracic duct, which is a little bit lower but centrally located. And you can see that most of the lymph is going to get picked up by the thoracic duct. Now along the way throughout our entire body there are smaller areas where lymph is kind of collected um, initially. You can see there's a lot of them in, in our um, pelvic region, our armpits, even in our um, neck. So when we're sick um, that's what they're feeling for. They're feeling for the swollen lymph nodes. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. What is the actual structure of a lymph node? Well, lymph has got to enter and it's got to exit those lymph nodes. And so the one, the vessels that bring lymph in are called afferent vessels. So lymph enters, 
one of these vessels and then it trickles through these little um, medulla pyramid shaped figures here so it's hard to see with the green and it gets filtered and cleaned out but eventually it exits through the efferent vessel maybe going to a more major lymph lymph vessel and merging with some other efferent vessels on its way back to the heart but all altogether um, these lymph nodes in this lymphatic system has a couple different functions so I already mentioned that it filters the the lymph if there's any foreign particles in there it just kind of cleans it out so it's kind of like your defense system the second thing that these lymphatic vessels do is they return blood to the heart and in doing so um, they maintain the volume of our blood and the third thing lymphatic tissue does is that it helps our immune system by producing lots of different white blood cells in the case of the lymph nodes, they produce a type of white blood cell simply called a lymphocyte. And there are a lot of different subtypes of lymphocytes. For example, the thymus is lymphatic tissue located right above the heart in the area of the chest called the mediastinum. And the thymus um, produces a specific type of lymph lymphocyte called a T cell, T for thymus. Another lymphatic organ that we may not think of it as such are the tonsils. And the tonsils are really a, a piece of lymphatic tissue that acts as a protective barrier from um, things that are coming in from the outside environment. And finally, the spleen, right behind your stomach. Um, the spleen uh, does a lot of purposes. It's, it serves as a reservoir if we need extra blood, if there was some blood loss, they kind of store that extra. Um, but they also produce, just like all the other lymphatic organs, a specific type of white blood cell. So that's a look at the major um, lymphatic organs that help to play a role in filtering the lymph, returning lymph back to the heart, and producing lymphocytes. Thanks for listening.